and yet to go in 2025 here in North America and Atlanta. And I'm here with my very esteemed colleagues, Melinda Marx, covering application security. And cloud security. Yep. Cloud security. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jim Pry covering enterprise networking. Enterprise networking. Okay. Uh, so it's always interesting, guys. Uh, KubeCon has become corporate, has become enterprise, right? There are 753, don't ask me why I know this number, 753 uh, <laughs> members, uh, CNCF members, and uh, 235 projects, and uh, lots of them are graduated, and lots of them are going enterprise, uh, you know, getting ready for prime time. And you see that on the audience. There's not just the nerds, you know, they have the propellers on their heads, there's actually enterprise guys now there. Um, What's your take uh, regarding uh, cloud native and enterprise uh, so far? What, what have you seen? Well, I'll start off with this part saying I'm also impressed by the growth in the community. When we're up to like, is it, how many is it, 9,000 attendees this year? I heard around 10,000. 10, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pretty good size. A lot of people here. Uh, for those of us who were here, we went through some pretty egregious lines. To get in. That's right. <laughs> we kept through security and all. Uh, but really great to see, as you said, the continuous steady transition, even a big, I noticed a big change even between Masters to Plan and Salt Lake and this one, that the number of parties that are here, and really amongst the sponsor community, that are not just pure D Kubernetes only, they're, they're talking about how to integrate Kubernetes into your existing infrastructures, how to fit that in with everything else that you have, because with the exception of a few, you know, recently born organizations, most places Kubernetes fitting into an existing brownfield environment, right? Yeah. And it's got to live alongside other things. I'm going to see a lot more attention be quick to that about how do we help you with those, you know, reality uh, transitions into production environment. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of, of course, there's a lot of talk of AI and how people are going to um, have Kubernetes supporting AI efforts. So that's exciting to see. And for me, of course, I come to see how security is front and center because you never want to see um, the emphasis on productivity and scale without thinking about security. You don't want the adoption of technology to get ahead of your feet for what you need to do to stay secure. And um, for me, I like to come back with all the takeaways for the security teams because you don't see a lot of security people here, but there are a lot of great security themes. So um, on the pre they had a um, colo, Security Con on the first day dedicated to software uh, supply chain security. Do you know how many people were there? Um, I, I can't remember. I think they said there were like thousands who RSVP'd wow. and the room was huge. Um, and in the main sessions, there was it was pretty packed. So it was good to see. That's a good sign because that's your scale for the venue scale of the, the, the workloads, right? You need right. security. And they really emphasize the investments in making sure that you're, they're um, making sure that the open source tools and that the community can um, develop things securely or share, share whatever they um, develop. They can make sure that the source is secure. There's a lot of software supply chain, um, new tools that they have for developers. For me, I want to make sure the security teams know about that so they can um, implement that. And of course, I have upcoming research on software supply chain security and want the AppSec teams to be very developer focused because developers care about security because we had so many people at this uh, and, and other sessions throughout the week on security and um, setting policies and guardrails. And that also just, I, I see a lot of the, what, what excites me is building security from the foundation up. So security is built into the infrastructure, platform engineers are thinking about security. There's a lot of overlap with things like um, availability, keeping resiliency, um, backups. If they're doing AI, what are you gonna do to support the data, um, support um, secure access? All of these things are super important. Stuff becomes real when it has to be secure. And same thing, when stuff becomes real, it has a lot of network impact. Yeah, actually, just to kind of build on what you're saying, uh, mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot more attention being paid here to the networking challenges, but a lot of it has to do with integrated and secure network. Right. So while there's a, you know, that's another essential a aspect of this structure. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, I've seen a lot and hearing a lot of the network side of things focusing on, okay, yes, we need to upgrade and do production quality, resilient networking on high performance, 
but they want it to be secure from day one. Right. Which is great. Mm -hmm. right? This parallels kind of broader things we see in the industry about this convergence of attention and, and design uh, objectives around secure networking. Uh -huh. uh, and that's really good. So yeah. that's hearing that from several of the uh, sort of networking related folks here. Yeah. This yeah, also the idea of frameworks, a big word for the week is conformance. Um, you know, just making sure that there are standards and that's key to scale and that's key for enterprises. Yeah, this whole declarative shift where I talk to the couple of people about declarative versus the old paradigm of muddling through by scripting a solution for anything, for everything. And uh, it also shifts to product field. I find that fascinating because people are having the hardest time often they have to do the work on a daily basis, the server admins, the network admins. I mean, all those roles, they have to script a lot of quick solutions so that they don't have to do everything manually. They, they get stuff stood up, they get stuff managed, they get stuff patched, all of that. But uh, I see vendors are now looking at how to integrate the declarative and the imperative part. Mm -hmm. They don't ask anymore, replace all this imperative stuff. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not the way to go, it's not scalable, but Here's how you get declarative while at the same time still running and securing and operating the, the, the imperative thing. And that's kind of when it shows when the brownfield stuff gets real, when, uh, when, the, when the conference becomes uh, an enterprise conference. Yes. Yep. No more propeller heads. <laughs> oh, there's still propeller heads. Yes. And yeah. that's good. They're part of the community and you need them, right? Yeah. What about from your, your chair? What are you seeing? If I, if I, observability. As part of the platform, big topic, and we just spoke with a couple of interesting vendors this morning about uh, eBPF-driven uh, observability, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, that, that whole notion of making that, just like security, shift all the way to the left and part of the development lifecycle and part of the CI/CD tool chain, that is uh, a big deal because we have still a lot of separate platforms for observability, right? We had 8 to 12 or 15 tool group on the average enterprise. And mm -hmm. now standardizing that and not just saying, oh yeah, open telemetry solves everything, right. but figuring out how can we empower and enable developers to build that into their code and um, make sure that it is covered and it's we go away from that mentality we are either going to release on that state or we're going to do observability properly we're going to if you're going to do tracing you know we're going to do uh, all the mud packs for stuff and that's a big part and then the pressure comes from ai and uh, those ai workloads and uh, what they do to kubernetes what kubernetes has to do toward them you know and that networking is probably a big, big issue from your perspective. Well, yeah, I mean, in general, it's, it's really interesting to see, um, to your point about all the telemetry versus CDPF, is it panned either, is it or, I think it's, it's C-Sand, yeah. yeah. It's in, uh, the telemetry is a great way to get everyone thinking about how to simplify and standardize. It's a standard, uh, yeah. It's not a software, it's a standard. But EVPF, by the way, is an awesome way to get instrumentation in place, mm. you know, as well as security. Yeah, I was going to say, know, this all ties really together. And this is Plus, what, for me, it's important for security teams to find out about these other tools instead of just implementing more security tools, doing monitoring that may have overlapping functionality. To me, it's all, it's all about efficiency, and we have yes. to make these things work together if we want to support and scale. Yeah, How important is EBPF for security? Can you uh, can you elaborate on that? I mean, uh, theoretically, it lets you take action, right? Right, and there are so many security yeah. vendor tools that are based on EBPF, and in the in, for security vendors, there's a lot of talk about the importance of runtime for software uh, security. And so, everyone's every time you talk to somebody with some cool security solution, you ask, "How are you doing it?" It's usually EBPF, and yeah. But again, this is, well, do you need an extra security tool? Or have you talked to other groups? Have you talked to platform engineering? And also, you know, it's, it's uh, controversial, but um, there may be non-security tools that, can, that have security use cases that might be able to give security teams what they need, especially yep. if you're more born in the cloud and that. don't have a formal security team. So it's important to look to talk to these other groups and make sure you're collaborating instead of just, um, you know, working as a security person trying to use tools that you'll like. 
you want to build the efficiency in because you need to support the, ultimately you have to support the developers, you not just doing your job. Down, you right. Yeah. And you want them to tr trust you. So one yeah. of the, um, my latest studies on cloud security found that 48% of um, people using develop, uh, security tools for development, um, it's the developers and the DevOps teams without consulting security at all. Right. And that's really really scary to me. That's a scary number. It's, it's good to know they care about security and they're um, enabling maybe CSP security features or they're using open source tools or do whatever they need to do for security, but they're not comfortable telling security that should be a big red flag for security and an, an opportunity for security vendors to um, talk to them and for other vendors to talk to have them be able to collaborate with other teams. There's a smaller percentage who said that they pick the tools and then they let security know about it and then the smaller percentage saying the security teams, they trust the security teams to pick the tools and Just roll them like out. Just like observability, security has to be part of the platform. And right. Because if it's not, it's kind of, it's very a human nature thing, right? Mm -hmm. As a developer, I need to deliver for my private demo and uh, if that doesn't work, the rest doesn't matter, right? But mm -hmm. if I don't have the choice between doing it best practices and missing my deadline or just yeah. getting it quickly done, then that's what I want to do. But to, the platform needs to be still secure even when I get it quickly done. And yep. I think that is the next big frontier, what they need. Yeah, great. And uh, yeah, so I, I think there's, there's a lot more to talk about. And uh, yeah. well, we, we may talk a little bit more about it. Uh, uh, in uh, maybe another, we'll, we'll continue to watch this. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I'm excited to see, you know, how this how this continues to evolve. Yeah, uh, I think uh, we're going to see more more development, more sort of enterpriseization, productization, production ready sort of approaches. Uh, yeah, it, it's good that there's attention to these, you know, supporting storylines, and that people will keep seeing more of that. Enterpriseization, yeah. that's the glitch. Yeah.